The objectives for this lecture are to explain how to use the Hunter-Nash method for calculating the equilibrium number of stages needed for a liquid-liquid extraction cascade. We can have an overall mass balance for our system, where the feed plus the solvent added to the system equals the total amount in our system, which must equal the total mass coming out in our final raffinate product and our final extract product. We can also do this mass balance based on each individual component within our system. As well as taking a total mass balance over the whole system, we can also look at a mass balance on a single stage. So for our stage N, we know that the raffinate arriving from the stage below plus the extract arriving from the stage above must be the same total mass as the raffinate and extract leaving stage N. We can rearrange that mass balance to give what's called the difference in flows. So this is the difference in the, fl in the flow entering and leaving stage N to, s to the stage below and the difference in the flow leaving and arriving into stage N from the stage above. From our mass balance we can see that these two differences must be equal to each other which we refer to as delta. This value of delta must be the same for every stage in our extraction system. We can carry out this same mass balance process but for each component in the system and we can again do a general mass balance on stage N and then rearrange this to give the distance in each of the component flows between stage N and the stage above and the stage below. Again we can see that the difference in the mass flow rate of the component for each stage must be constant. We can now take our overall mass balance for the stage N and our component mass balance for stage N and rearrange these together to produce an equation for the difference in mass fraction between the flows on each stage. Therefore, for each stage, there must be a straight line for the set of component flows that pass through the same point. This point can be thought of as an operating point, and this will become more apparent when we do our example on a ternary phase diagram. We're given the flow rate of the feed and the feed composition and the flow rate of the solvent and the solvent composition. So we can plot our feed and solvent points on our ternary phase diagram and then we know that the mixing point must lie on a straight line between these two values. We can then calculate the mixing point either by taking a mass balance for each component or by using the lever arm rule and saying that the ratio between our feed flow rate to our solvent flow rate is equal to the length of the line between S and M to F and M. In our single stage example, our raffinate and extract products were limited by the equilibrium tie lines of the system. However, in a multi-stage process, because we have multiple stages and multiple equilibriums, we're free to pick a composition of our products. So in this case, we're going to pick that we only want 2.5% of our solute A in our raffinate product. So, from the knowledge that we only want 2.5% of solute A in the raffinate, we can plot our raffinate point on our ternary phase diagram. So we know that our raffinate product must be on the same side of the equilibrium curve as the feed and we know that the product must lie on the equilibrium curve. Now we have plotted this point we can read off the other mass fractions of the components in the raffinate product. For a mass balance on the system we know that the mixing point must lie on a straight line between our raffinate and extract product. So if we draw a straight line from our raffinate product through our mixing point and continuing to our equilibrium line, we know 
that the, our extract product must be on the intercept between this straight line and the equilibrium curve. Now we have found this point, we can again read off the composition of our extract product. Now we have the compositions for both the extract and the raffinate products. We can carry out a mass balance to calculate the flow rates of both the raffinate and extracts. Or we can use the lever arm rule because we know that the ratio between our extract and our raffinate must be given by the length of the line between the raffinate and the mixing point divided by the length of the line between our extract and mixing point. We have proved that each flow pair has a straight line passing between them to a common point. Therefore, as we know our compositions of the extract and feed, we can draw our first straight line, which is the red line, and as we also know the compositions of our solvent and raffinate, we can draw a second line, which is our blue line. Where these two lines meet is our operating point for the whole liquid-liquid multi-stage extraction system. So we've already drawn our first operating line, as this is the line between our top product extract, our feed and our operating point, shown in grey. Now, this extract is in equilibrium with the first stage raffinate. So this is seen by the red oval. So what we can do is we can use our equilibrium tie lines to draw our equilibrium line between this extract and the raffinate. The next step is to look at the next flow pair. So our L1 and our second stage extract E2 are then the flow pair, so the blue oval. We know that for the flow pairs they must lie on a straight line with our operating point. So if we draw a straight line between our operating point and our R1, we can then extend this to the other side of our equilibrium curve to get our E2 composition. This stepping process is then repeated for the other stages. First equilibrium, then operating line, and so on. For this process, four equilibrium stages are needed to generate the required purity of the raffinate product.